Welcome back to the Let's Create series where we work on a time tracker app. In episode 23, we're going to work on the Android side and we're going to focus on parsing the data from the Cloud Firestore. So the first thing we're going to do is create the test data repository on the Android side, just like we did on the iOS side. Then we're going to work on our converter and document reference and snapshot extension so that we can convert these Java Lang objects over to our C Sharp objects and regular data types. After that, we're going to verify that our data works from Cloud Firestore and that it's being parsed properly. Before we get started, I wanted to let you know about the Discord server. If you have any questions about your code, whether it be from the Let's Create series or something you're working on on your own, feel free to post a question in the Discord server. And if it's something I can help with, I'll invite you to the stream and we can work on it together. So in services, just like on the iOS project, we're going to right click, add new class, and this will be a test data repository. Just like the iOS one, we want this one to implement or inherit from base repository. Base repository needs a type, so we'll say test data. And then we need to implement, uh, import the using there. And then we need to provide that document path. This is why I'm thinking there's, there's some shared project stuff here. Um, so we'll just paste that in here. I just replaced everything with it. Uh, this public is going to be an issue because, uh, you know, we have it set as protected, uh, which is fine. Otherwise, you have this Firebase auth auth default instance, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's comment that out. And then just kind of above it, we're going to delete it here in a second. Uh, just above it, plus Firebase auth is what this one is. Instance current user UID. And so I'll delete this comment. I'll leave this up for a second. Um, so you can, you can type this in and then we'll move on. Um, we need to, we need to declare this as um, a dependency. So right above the namespace, let's say assembly uh, dependency, right? And then you can uh, use a quick fix for Xamarin forms, not the compiler services. And then this will be of uh, test data repository needs to be a type of type of test data repository and if we look in the uh, iOS project we should see that it's you know it's identical right um, so these are the same they don't they don't do anything special or specific uh, we can close those and now we can test this at least the get method right um, so we need the document ID, which I think we deleted. Uh, so let's head over to, I'm going to minimize all these and then reopen the shared project. We're going to head over to the test page model. So the time clock page model. We'll scroll down to that little test area that, you know, this var result equals and then if result. And so instead of save, I'm just going to, I'm going to comment all this out because we're just going to come back to it. And then I'm, I'm going to put in that stuff that we had before, right? And so before we had var item equals await, and this is page model locator, dot resolve, I repository, and this takes in a test data typed parameter. And then we'll just say get, and we need to provide some kind of ID. So we can do that by going to our Firebase, grab one of these IDs, I'm going to just grab this one that has like the boing and stuff. I'm going to copy that ID and I'm going to paste it as the parameter in this method. And so now we can check to make sure everything mapped, right? So we say if item does not equal null and we can put a breakpoint there. And then I'm going to press run and I have a feeling it's going to take a super long time to build. So we're going to log in with our test user just like normal. So, okay, we're here. We should get that breakpoint. Oh no, we got one on the exception. All right, so let's see. Something didn't like that whole mapping thing. Invalid cast. Okay, so we tried to cast something uh, that was not allowed to be cast. So that's not good. So we need a convert method or some kind of like two dictionary method on this, on this I dictionary of string Java Lang object. Um, so let's go ahead and and make that. So we'll we'll call this one on the doc dot data. We'll say dot uh, to dictionary. This will have an error because we don't have that defined yet. So 
let's head over to the extensions folder, which we're already in. And let's make another extension and we'll call this one. So we'll make, we'll add a new class in the extensions folder and we'll call this one Java Lang extensions. So Java Lang extensions. And this one's basically going to take that I dictionary um, of the Java type and it's going to convert it to a C sharp. So as always, our extension needs to be a static class. And then in here we can say public uh, static method and this is going to return a an I dictionary and we can use a quick fix. So I'm using alt enter and this is going to use the system.collections.generic and this will take in a string as the key and a C sharp object as the value. And then we'll just say to dictionary and this needs to take in a, a this I dictionary and this one's going to be a string Java dot Lang object and we can call this one map is fine so let me extend this for now since we're not running this and just so you can see all the code and so this is this i dictionary string and java lang object map and now this needs to return an i dictionary um, with a c sharp string and a c sharp object and so what we can do here is say var dict like we did in the iOS project and this will be var dict equals new uh, this can be a regular dictionary and this will be a string and object and then we'll drop a couple lines and we'll return dict so that'll get rid of our error and this basically assumes we converted and now from here we need to go through each of the values just like we did on iOS and we need to convert them from the Java Lang object to a C sharp object. Um, so the first thing we want to do is grab that value from this, um, you know, this map object that we are passing in or actually extending from. So we can say uh, for each and we'll say var key is fine in map dot keys. And that gives us if we hover over that, we'll see. Uh, it gives us a collection of strings. And so that's perfect. That's basically all we're looking for. So the first thing we want to do is grab the value. So var value will equal map and we'll uh, use square brackets and we'll use key. And so that'll give us the value of this key on the iteration. And then we want to check the type just like we did on iOS. So we'll say if value is and these are all going to be kind of java lang objects so this will be the first one we can do is java.lang.boolean so if it is a java.lang.boolean and we can just say um, bln is fine it doesn't matter so if it is a boolean then let's go ahead and add it to the dictionary so we'll add and this will be the key and then we need to convert this Boolean to a C sharp Boolean. So we say BLN dot Boolean value. And so as we can see, the Java Lang Boolean dot Boolean value method returns a C sharp Boolean. So that's exactly what we want. So that one works fine. We need to add an else if. And this is going to see if value is uh, maybe a long, right? So is java.lang.long, and we'll just say LNG is fine, doesn't matter. And if it is a long, we'll just we're just gonna condense it down to an integer. So we will add that to the dictionary. So dict.add, and it'll be key as well, same thing, but we'll say lng.int value. And we can see that int value returns that int. So that's good. And so from here, we can say else if. And now we can check for an actual Java Lang integer. So we'll say if value is java.lang.integer. And we can call this one integer is fine. We can't use int because that's a C sharp keyword. So if it is a Java Lang integer, then we'll say dict.add. And this will be key integer dot int value again the next thing we want to check for is a double and so we can say else if value is java dot lang dot double and we'll just say dbl or something is fine 
And if it is a double, then we'll add it to the dictionary. And this can be um, DBL dot double value. And if we hover over that, we'll see that that adds a C sharp double. So that's perfect. Uh, the next thing we'll check for is a Java string. So if else if uh, value is Java dot lang dot string. And we can just say str is fine. Then we'll say dict dot add. And this will be key and str dot string or to string, I guess is fine. Next thing we need to check for is that timestamp. And so we can say else if we can say if value is and we'll check for um, a Java dot util dot date. And so if value is Java dot util dot date, we can call it anything we want. Um, we can just say DT. So if it is that, then we need to make a date format. So we can say var DT format equals. And then we can say new simple date format. And then we'll need a quick fix for that Java dot text, I think. And if we look at the IntelliSense, we'll see that it'll take a string pattern. And so this will be that four digit year, very similar to the iOS four digit year. Uh, we use a dash and well, we'll use a slash. We'll do, maybe we'll back up on that four digit year and we'll do month day year. So we'll do two capital M's for month, a slash, two lowercase d's for day, and then four digits for year. So lowercase y. We'll use a space and we'll use capital H, two of them, a colon, and then we'll use two lowercase m's and two lowercase s's. And that'll give us our hours, minutes, seconds. And then we can go ahead and add this to our dictionary. So we'll say dict.add, it'll be key, and then it'll be dtformat.format. .format. And this wants a Java Lang object, and we can just add dt to that. And so that'll format that Java util date to a string. So the last thing we need to do is convert Java collections to C sharp collections. This will be used when we do things like retrieve a list of items or a Firebase collection from Firebase Cloud Firestore. So what we can do here is say else if value is system.collections.icollection and we can just give this a temporary name. We'll call it collection is fine. And so if value is some kind of an I collection, then we'll make it a Java array list. So now down here we can say var array list or ARR list or whatever you'd like, um, something other than list because we're also going to have list. Um, so var r list equals new array list. And we can use a quick fix to import the using for java.util. And then in the constructor, we can pass in our collection that we just created. Under here, we can define a C sharp list. And so this will be var list equals new list. And in here, we'll just be a sh type string. And now we want to go through that r list that we created. So uh, we could say for var i equals zero, i is less than r list dot size and i plus plus. And now in here, we can add this to the C sharp list. And we can do that by saying list dot add. And then this will be r list dot get, and that'll be at index i, and then just to string. And then under this for loop, let's go ahead and add this C sharp list to our dictionary. So we can do that by saying dict dot add use key and list. The last thing we want to do is kind of the catch all. And if none of the other conditions are satisfied, then all we'll do is add the key and the value to the dictionary. So we can say dict dot add key and value dot to string. And that'll do its best to convert it to a C sharp string. So with that done, we can head back over to document reference extensions, uh, which we said we would change to document snapshot extensions, but we should be able to head over here. And now our two dictionary is no longer throwing an exception. Um, so we can actually test this now. Uh, last time we tested it, we got a, we got a, a JSON error. Um, the parse didn't work. And so I'm going to put that breakpoint back. You might still have it there. Um, and then I'm going to check uh, a no, not account service. Uh, it's our page model, right? Yeah. And so items shouldn't be null anymore. Um, so let's see if that's true. So I'm going to run the app. Okay. So items shouldn't be null. 
Let's see. It's not. Okay, that's good news. And let's see if everything mapped properly. So we have age is 12. That's good. Amount 1.54. Flag is true. And I would assume if it didn't map properly, it would be false, right? ID did map. It matches the ID we used. Um, name, Boeing. Some date, 1030. Um, so we could check that, but I'm pretty sure that's correct too. So it looks like everything is mapping properly. So that's good. I think that's a good stopping point for today's video. If you like the video, feel free to give it a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments section. Thank you for watching the Xamarin Forms tutorial. I'm Patrick, and this is the Let's Create series.